What's up everyone, my name is Parvin and I welcome you back to Pertainer Monsters League of Legends Top 5 Plays. I'm excited to show you what week 134 is in store for you, so without further ado we're gonna hop straight into our number 5 play with Silver Child on Lee Sin. At the start of this play, we see he's walking straight into a trap at level 1 as the enemy team waits patiently and then they spring into action, dropping him so low and forcing an immediate flash. He then sonic waves onto rates, activating resonating strike, and then he pops elixir to just barely keep himself alive. With his health potion taking away, he runs to his tower, but the enemy Jace pursues and then flashes over the wall, landing his Q, but thanks to the health potion he survives, and then they actually turn things around with a rupture for the first blood. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have XTS Lion on Orianna in a very high elo game, and at the beginning we see them catch the enemy Nasus as they continuously slow him as he tries to get out, but the enemy team is in a weird position so they can't help him and he goes down. So an ult's a bunch of them, but right after we see Sejuani dash in as Draven ults on top of Orianna's ult, absolutely decimating the enemy team in the blink of an eye. Draven spots Talon running away and decides to chase after him, flashing over the wall and picking up the quad shortly after. What separates this wombo combo play from others and really earns this play the number 4 spot is the combination of how high elo it is, how they were 8k gold behind to start, and how they get the inhib off it. And a nexus turret. Or two. Screw it, they take it to the nexus off the ace 27 minutes in, killing everything in between the tier 2 turret to the nexus in one push. Scoring in at our number 3 spot is the procs on Ezreal. We start things in a fight of dragon as we shift our focus to Ezreal who's being dived down by Blitzcrank and Alistar. He sneaks in a Q but then gets pulverized but a great barrier keeps him alive as he runs back to his team and gets a little helping hand from Alistar then turns around to finish him off. Now we see Annie coming in with her stun ready so he Qs and Arcane shifts away dodging the Blitzhook as we speed it up a little bit and we see Annie and Blitzcrank go on the hunt looking to catch either Ezreal or Syndra. He pumps a lot of mystic shots into them and always makes sure to keep his distance using preventative arcane shifts to make sure he doesn't get caught by any of Annie's spells. With them closing in fast, he quickly reacts with an arcane shift to dodge both Tibbers and the hook into an immediate flash at a range of Annie to keep him alive. Tibbers tanks the tower so they opt to dive which forces them to keep running because a single Annie spell can mean death. He then beautifully E's into his ultimate scaring Blitzcrank away and still perfectly staying out of range of Annie as she just barely misses her W. He continues to run away as Annie pursues and he makes sure to keep on landing those mystic shots because every time he lands it it reduces the cooldown on all his spells by one second. And this in combination with blue buff keeps his arcane shift up more often and his mobility better. When he gets in range of the enemy red buff, he even starts using his mystic shot on that to lower the cooldown on arcane shift and keep his options open. With a Q and final E away, we see Maokai come in and get on Annie as more enemy players show up to help her out, but he still manages to grab the kill with his ultimate and then flash out. They both escape after a long kiting session for Ezreal with beautiful awareness of his limits that result in an extra kill on Annie after the fight at Dragon. Coming in at our number 2 play, we have Masano on Nunu, and at the start we see him duking it out with the enemy Thresh when he narrowly escapes the slow from the box as he retreats back, knowing two more enemy players are on the way. He flashes into the brush and immediately starts channeling absolute zeros. We see Thresh, Ezreal, and Master Yi fall for his trap, instantly getting blown up for the triple. With the enemy Nidalee still lurking around, he runs into the brush as she comes down and goes for the spear, but he dodges it, and then after the trap he decides to run the other way. She gets into cougar form to hunt him down as he runs and consumes a minion. He uses Ice Blast to slow her advance, but after the pound she gets into range for Flash, landing a Q and E and then getting out to go for the spear, but he fakes her out again. With another Ice Blast, he pieces out as we see her ignite bring him so low and pings come out from the friendly Zed, indicating he's on the way. He dodges another spear and then goes back into the brush, completely juking her out and allowing for the consume as Zed finally shows up, just in time as the final Ice Blast allows for his escape and the fourth kill in this fantastic play. And for our number one pro play for this week, we have Evil Sonda Man playing your textbook support Lulu, but when looking to feed dead in the eyes, she transforms into the carry her team needs. She polymorphs Jax to suppress damage as she ease him and the tower helps bring him low, but the enemy team just ignores her feeble attempts and continues the siege. Throwing out some auto attacks and a glitter land, she finally drops Jax and then turns and bursts Ari with picks for the double as the enemy team finishes off the tower. With her ultimate up, she man modes it as she ignores Lee Sin for now and polymorphs Caitlyn to stop her damage and then gets a clutch burst off as Lee Sin kicks her away for the triple. With Zed on the way and the Nexus getting lower and lower, she plays it safe and exhausts Lee Sin, guaranteeing the survival of the Nexus while also handing over the easy kill to Zed. 54 minutes into the game, we can see how close the game was with 8 towers apiece and only a small gold advantage after the 4 kills they picked up. We also see her pure support build that was just enough to save the game for her team. They push all the way down the mid and after killing Alstar they secure the final Nexus Tower and the game right after. And for the bonus clip of the week we have Jasper Snail and Janna with some of the most clutch level 1 Janna plays I've ever seen. I'm sure you guys will like this clip so watch closely, enjoy it, and thanks again everyone for watching episode 134 for League of Legends Top 5 Plays.